China found superbugs might have caused pneumonia outbreak. JP Morgan to outsource $500 billion custody business. Tesla recalls nearly all vehicles sold in US to fix autopilot warning system. Nations strike deal at COP28 to transition away from fossil fuels. Argentina's Malay devalues peso by 54%. Foxconn invests additional $1 billion for giant apple plant in India. The United Nations demands humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza. Biden says Netanyahu must change as Israel loses global support. Hello, I'm Wade Lee. Thank you for joining us on Funday News. It is Thursday, December 14th, and here are your top stories. Doctors in China say the white lung pneumonia outbreak may have been partly driven by superbugs or infections resistant to many antibiotics. Figures from the peer-reviewed journal Frontiers in Microbiology show 90% of infections with this bacteria are now resistant to common antibiotics in China. In the US and Europe, it is resistant in 10 to 15% of cases. The outbreak in China was named white lung because children suffering from the pneumonia had white patches on x-rays of their lungs. Doctors said the patches showed areas with denser lung tissue, which can be caused when the body fights infections with bacteria like Mycoplasma pneumoniae. Alluding to the antibiotic resistance threat in China, Dr. Yin Yudong, an infectious disease doctor at Beijing Chaoyang Hospital, told a local publication, we have to take various measures to curb antibiotic drug resistance. He added, otherwise, we risk having no treatments for children. Doctors are left with few options when patients don't respond to the drug. Two sources with knowledge of the matter said J.P. Morgan Chase is set to outsource the operation of its local custody business in Hong Kong and Taiwan, with Citigroup, HSBC, and Standard Chartered in the race for the mandate. The sources said the Wall Street Bank, the world's third-largest global custodian, is in the process of selecting another bank to take over the local custodian operation in Hong Kong and Taiwan. The third source said the bank is aiming to complete the transition by the end of next year. Reuters reported in the Asia-Pacific region, besides Hong Kong and Taiwan, JP Morgan provides local custodian services in India. JP Morgan in recent years exited lower-margin local custodian business from other markets in Asia-Pacific including Australia. According to the two sources, JP Morgan currently provides both global and local custodian services for clients in Hong Kong and Taiwan but has decided to withdraw from the local level as the cost-income ratio has gone up amid a decline in assets. Tesla is recalling nearly all of the vehicles it sold in the U.S. to fix a defective system that's supposed to ensure drivers are paying attention when they use autopilot. Documents posted Wednesday by the U.S. safety regulators say the company will send out a software update to fix the problems. The U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says its investigation found autopilot's method of ensuring that drivers are paying attention can be inadequate and can lead to foreseeable misuse of the system. The recall comes after a two-year investigation by the NHTSA into a series of crashes that happened while the autopilot partially automated driving system was in use. Some were deadly. The recall covers more than 2 million across its Model Y, S, 3 and X produced between October 5, 2012, and December 7 of this year. The documents said the software update includes additional controls and alerts to further encourage the driver to adhere to their continuous driving responsibility. Representatives from nearly 200 countries agreed at the COP28 climate summit on Wednesday to begin reducing global consumption of fossil fuel to avert the worst of climate change, signaling the eventual end of the oil age. COP28 President Sultan al Jaber called the deal historic, but added that its true success would be in its implementation. He told a crowded plenary at the summit, We are what we do, not what we say. We must take the steps necessary to turn this agreement into tangible actions. The deal struck in Dubai after two weeks of hard-fought negotiations was meant to send a powerful message to investors and policymakers that the world is united in its desire to break with fossil fuels. More than 100 countries had lobbied hard for strong language in the COP28 agreement to phase out oil, gas and coal use, but came up against powerful opposition from the Saudi Arabia-led oil producer group OPEC, which said the world can cut emissions without shunning specific fuels.
Argentina devalued the peso by 54 percent, overhauled its crawling peg, and announced massive spending cuts to eliminate its primary fiscal deficit next year as the first step in President Javier Milei's shock therapy program. After the close of local markets on Tuesday, Argentina's economy minister Luis Caputo said the newly inaugurated administration weakened the official exchange rate to 800 pesos per dollar. It was 366.5 per dollar before the address. The central bank will henceforth target a monthly devaluation of 2 percent. The country's central bank is scheduled to announce new monetary measures on Wednesday. According to a senior economic official, the government will slash spending equivalent to 2.9 percent of gross domestic product, which is considered a radical fiscal adjustment. According to the government's estimates, cuts to energy subsidies will save 0.5 percent of GDP, while reductions to transport subsidies will save 0.2 percent. The administration also expects reductions in social security and pensions to save an additional 0.4 percent of GDP. Foxconn Technology Group has won approval to invest at least $1 billion more in a plant it's building in India that will make Apple Incorporated products, a major ramp-up in its goal of building a hub beyond China. People familiar with the matter said the world's biggest assembler of iPhones plans to spend the amount on top of the $1.6 billion it earlier set aside for the 300-acre site closed in Bengaluru's airport. The source said the new capital will bankroll additional capacity for Apple devices, including likely the iPhone. Bloomberg said the Taiwanese firm will have set aside roughly $2.7 billion for the site, including the most recently approved spending, set to become the centerpiece of its manufacturing capabilities in India. Karnataka's government said Tuesday it had approved another 139.11 billion rupees, $1.7 billion, of overall Foxconn investment in the state. Bloomberg News reported in March Foxconn could also use the site to produce parts for its nascent EV business. The United Nations on Tuesday demanded an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war after more than three-quarters of the 193 members General Assembly backed the move, which had been vetoed by the United States in the Secretary Council last week. The U.S. does not have a veto in the General Assembly. It vetoed against the resolution, along with Israel and eight other countries. The resolution was adopted to a round of applause with 153 votes in favor, while 23 countries abstained from the vote. The General Assembly resolution also demands the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages and that the warring parties comply with international law, specifically with regard to the protection of civilians. An attempt by the United States to amend the text to include a rejection and condemnation of the heinous terrorist attacks by Hamas, and the taking of hostages, and a bid by Austria to add that the hostages were being held by Hamas both failed to get the two-thirds majority support needed to pass. U.S. President Joe Biden said on Tuesday that Israel is losing support over its indiscriminate bombing of Gaza, and that Benjamin Netanyahu should change, exposing a new rift in relations with the Israeli Prime Minister. Biden said Israel's security can rest on the United States, but right now it has more than the United States. It has the European Union, it has Europe, it has most of the world, but they're starting to lose that support by indiscriminate bombing that takes place. Biden's remarks, made to donors to his 2024 re-election campaign, were his most critical to date of Netanyahu's handling of Israel's war in Gaza. They are a stark contrast to his literal and political embrace of the Israeli leader days after Hamas militants' October 7 attack on southern Israel. Biden said Netanyahu must change, adding that this government in Israel is making it very difficult. He also said that ultimately Israel can't say no to a Palestinian state, which Israeli hardliners oppose. The answer for yesterday was C. Swift. Our task is to challenge the UN to make a swift decision. Did you answer correctly? Now let's delve into the news of China-found superbug might have caused pneumonia outbreak. Number one, resistant, de. The new material used in the construction of the building is resistant to extreme weather conditions. Number two, antibiotics, 抗生素, 抗菌素. Your doctor may prescribe a cause of antibiotics. Number three, infection, 传染病, 感染. Ear infections are common in preschool children. Next, we have a multiple choice question for everyone to practice. Which answer would you choose? You can write your answer in the comments section. The correct answer will be announced tomorrow.
And that's it for today's Funday News. Be sure to tune into Funday News from Monday to Friday and click the link below to join Funday for free. I'm Wei Li, your host. I'll see you next time.